Tom. Master, the postman, he forget this. And he tooled back. Bucaresti. Romania? Who on earth do I know in Romania? Well, maybe inside is where, who, and why. Do you know I recognize his handwriting from somewhere? But where? No letter? Nothing? No? Do you know, I think this is very, very old. Maybe a joke? What, halfway around the world? Maybe someone a little bit... <coughs> Cuckoo. <coughs> I'll take a closer look at this later. Try to figure out who sent it. Maybe the other one come tomorrow. Then he'll have the pair. <laughs> well, of course, I was just uh, just passing, and I thought, for God's sake, of course, O'Neillan, very mad. I'll bring the actual glove for you tomorrow, James, if you can spare the time. Now, obviously it's, it's, uh, it's not exact, but it's, it's not bad. Actually, that's one of the extraordinary things. I've managed to retain all this information with such startling clarity. Wish I could do it when I was playing poker. So, James, what do you make of these symbols? I mean, that's what I was wondering. Very ancient. Late Middle Ages. The Six Row Pyramid. Kabbalists believe that some symbols or ciphers were, were not merely representations of God, but that they were God. That when they wrote down a series of magic symbols, God became present in the letters and figures. The symbols therefore contained all knowledge, past, present, and future. To learn what you wanted to know was, was only a matter of putting the question into God's language. These secret ciphers. And then interpreting his answer by reading the mystic lines. An infinitely more mysterious man resides within this distinguished academic, James. I don't know. Phileas just said he wanted to talk to me about it. It is exquisite. Oh, uh, be careful, Miss Rebecca. Master thinks that it's very, very, very old. Hmm. How bizarre symbols. I see something like this once. Really? In Paris. When I was a uh, sergeant fireman. Who sent you the glove? I have no idea. None at all. There was no covering letter. You must have some notions. Well, the address, uh, I mean, the, um, the writing. I do recognize it from somewhere, but... Ah, now, it uh, was posted in Bucharest. Romania? Hmm. I must see this glove. And you shall have it in your hands. Shall we say tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock? It is as though through some curious subversion an inner voice is dictating the secrets of the past to us. Ten o'clock, tomorrow then. Morning. <clears throat> Bye, James. There was a fire in the house. And I rescued a very old man. And he had a big book, heavy book. 
He wouldn't let it go. It meant more to him than life. And there were these on the cover of the book. Who was the man? I, I never knew. He vanishes. I think you should tell Phileas. Oh, master. He always leave a window open. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. That's part two. Yes? There's no window open. Yes, it's... Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Remember, some rise by sin and then some by virtue fall. Thank you. Jules, man, friend of Phileas Fogg. I have to talk to you. I mean you no harm. Who are you? My name is. My, my name is. My name. We have to get off the streets. Are you in danger? We both are. You'll be safe here. No one gets past. Madame Ludak, she has a... She, she has eyes like a bat and a... Tongue like a... Like a knife. Are you hungry? I have uh, some food if you're... Uh... Turn down the lamp. Please. What's wrong? Why do you hide from the light? Who did this to you? Who? <laughs> of this world it is impossible to give a name to such food yes yes food 